in your set of reappointments. But no, no, so the, for, the, for that meeting, it was perfect, yeah. Good, so make a motion to approve the minutes of July 19th. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. Do I we just have... realized Louise is not on. Ah. Um. Well, we have, we're gonna have a recording, the right. Zoom recording. Right. Uh, she's probably trying. We remembered yeah. to turn the, the both of these on now. You're recording and the Zoom is recording, so we're in good shape. Louise might beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> Many people, if she's trying to, if she's trying to get on, yeah. which is probably likely. Oh, yes, she like is. Her. You there, Louise? Yeah. Okay. Hi, Louise. We just approved Hi. the we just approved the minutes of July nineteenth. Yeah, I had a little trouble getting in. Okay. All right. So um, we have a bunch of warrants. Um, so we have an accounts payable warrant W twenty two dash zero four for seven hundred and twenty one thousand five hundred and forty nine dollars and twenty three cents. We've a series of payroll warrants, PW 22-04 for $86,606.42, PW 22-04B for $303.75. We have the payroll deduction warrants, PW, PDW 22-04 for $20,125.64. Dash 04B for $27.18. And the Student Activity Fund Warrant, W21-SAF4 for $3,776.63. And that is, uh, the large number of warrants is due, of course, to it having been three weeks since our last select board meeting due to the vacations of yours truly, and, uh, and Erica too. And so Erica, who is still still in Alaska on vacation as we speak. Um, but at any rate, I have reviewed um, these warrants and had all answers to my an qu questions answered to my satisfaction. So um, I'm okay with them. I would second. Okay. So motion to approve all of those above listed warrants. I'll second it again. And all in favor? Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. We have many conservation commission members, and we have visited the next amp site a number of times. Ah. But other than that, we're good. Good public comments. There being no public here. Old business confirming annual reappointments. That requires confirming. It was just because we didn't have. Ah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So you were given the authority to sign them all. So yes. I guess you get to decide if you want to actually sign each one physically or. Yeah, no, I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know I had earlier said yes, but that was before I took a look at the staggering number of actual appointments. <laughs> um, okay. And uh, yeah. And I think the list was updated for you as well. Yes. So, so just, and I'll say this just more for Louise, if. You know, because I assume that she's the one who put this huge yes. list yeah. together. Um, uh, uh, Louise, under my name, you have me as on the cable advisory board twice, and uh, and I could send you what I think you're what I think it should say. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Great. Great. And then, but I didn't think that we're actually like voting to approve this list today. This is just the list, isn't that right? This is the list and they need to be reappointed and, and so, last So meeting. we're gonna vote on this, so should we make this correction in um, an official sense? That's what I'm wondering. Sure. Sh sure, and last no. meeting. Um, Sorry, Louise? So at the last meeting, um, you all had voted to give Phil the authority to Sign. Sign. Yeah. So if you just yeah. want to confirm the list and we can, if there's anything you happen to so, see. So, so Louise, the correction would be you have me down as a cable advisory committee twice and the second one, delegate, 
I think you want to say ca uh, cable broadband, uh, no, no, FCAT board of directors. Hang on, I, I, I'm not saying that. Okay, so I've got it. Okay. So one of them is the Cable Advisory Committee, and the other one is the F, uh, the FCAT Board of Directors. And you're a delegate. To I'm, I'm I'm the I'm, I'm, I'm the Select Board delegate to the Board of Directors. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I know because it had taken that these weren't done last year. Uh huh. So yeah. the reason Lori have had quite a yes yes yes. So <laughs> many thanks to the two of them for getting it yeah. together. That's right <laughs> So with that correction, then um, we'll go ahead and... I, I don't get that that's a correction. They are two different positions, yes. are they not? Uh, no, one of them says Member Cable Advisory Committee. The other one says Delegate Cable Advisory Committee, FCAT. It's not the right, Cable so Advisory Committee, it's the FCAT Board of Directors. Okay, that's, that's what I found, so I just copied what I did. Oh, okay, Lord knows. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. We'll take that out. Okay. Well, well yeah, the corrections. Okay. We got it. And, uh, and then in new business, we have some new appointments, um, of which actually these are quality appointments, so well done. Um, well, um, did you want to just vote to say that you are confirming the new list? Yes. Just, yeah. Yes. Okay, motion to vote to con motion to confirm the new list. Uh, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. And then in new business, we have um, we're appointing Kathy Lamas to the Board of Health for a term ending. Uh, she's filling out the end of Carl Nelke's term, so it would just be through the end of um, where are we, 6 22. Okay. That, that's what the appointment will say at some point, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we have, um, we're appointing Amanda Herman as Assistant Emergency Management Director, fine, a fine uh, recruit. Appointing Kelsey Baker as Junior Firefighter, which I think is really cool. So this is the fourth generation of Bakers <laughs> uh -huh. as Conway Firefighters. Wow. And uh, that's just a really neat thing. Um, so uh, congratulations, Kelsey. And you also are our youngest junior firefighter as of the day of your appointment, but that's it's a good thing. Um, so, so, so those are the three appointments. To, so make a motion to approve the appointments of those three individuals. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And they will all have, they will all have uh, um, through, through end dates in their Yes, actually, um, Kathy Lavis does in the appointment letter from or the nomination from the Board of Health. Right. Um, but so yes, I will do that for um, Kelsey and Amanda. Well, Amanda. Yeah, Kel yeah. Kelsey is is the, they do it every year. Yeah. And Amanda, I don't know. I should remember since I was the assistant emergency yeah. management director. I will look. At <laughs> I have a feeling that's more than one. She's replacing I think you. That's, yeah. Yes, I think that's more than one year, though. No, it, I believe it is. Yeah. 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 Maybe like Great. three. Maybe three years. Um, so we're and then uh, we've been requested by the state to sign the contract extension for the Mohawk Trail Within Partnership grant that went to um, uh, Mary Wigmore. At end and colleagues for the uh, carbon credit study, and they re we have the request for a one-year extension was granted. So this is that's just nice. the signature that um, that that's required. So we need a motion to uh, authorize the select board chair to sign the extension. I will second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. That's good. And if you all are willing to sign that tonight, I will email it to them. Yeah. They need it directly. You all. You want to help?
I think it's August 9th, not 19th. I might have. Oh, made today, a today is oh. the 9th. Just <laughs> <Yeah. Discuss. laughs> I don't think I have a way out of it. No, no work. Um, the next on the uh, new business is to sign the current. Um, uh, contract for the current MVP South River Flood Resiliency Project. So, you know, and, you know, I guess congratulations are in order for uh, our town administrator for steering this, uh, this through to the point where they're awarding us money. So, um, that was this is, it has not been a cookie cutter kind of a thing. Previous to this, they awarded us pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's and the the amount of the grant was a, is one hundred ninety one thousand two hundred dollars, which is significant if we can spend it all. Um, with, but uh, we'll be hard pressed to do that actually, because they have. They limit the things that you can spend it on, unfortunately. Um, Real estate. So yes, but um, we've talked about that repeatedly as a board. It also includes, so, so some of the money is for the, is for fiscal year 23. It's it's 177,100 for fiscal year 22, and and 14,100 dollars for fiscal year 23, and. Um, Great. Yeah, and so basically the way this works is that when uh, when another entity offers us money, we say yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Um, so we do need a motion to sign, to authorize the signature of the South River Flood Resiliency Project contract. And a second. And all in favor? Aye. Okay. So the tie and bond third party storm water monitoring contract. Um, Ronnie, do you want to tell us about why this is important and what we're doing it for? Well, this is just a, a continuation right. of some of the monitoring that's been going on. Um, so it was requested that tie and bond do another few um, third party observations. And actually the check has already come in for this. So. Um, and the check was from Nextamp. From, from Nextamp, yes. Super. Yes, to cover it. Yes, yes. So this is uh, services, inspection services, for a lump sum fee of six hundred dollars per inspection, totaling eighteen hundred. Mm -hmm. and, and general coordination for the work site, total fee of two thousand three hundred dollars. Yeah, which includes some outstanding yes. work that have been done. So yes. So this is, it's entitled Supplemental Construction Period Third Party Observations, Conway Solar, Nexamp, 2394 Main Poland Road, the Newman property. All of the site visits that the Con Conservation Commission went on, we tagged along with the planning board, uh, led by Ty and Bond. Yeah. And they wrote reports of what we saw, just to make sure it was all well documented. So, and Ty and Bond um, is assisting the contractor who is responsible for maintaining construction period, stormwater erosion, sedimentation control measures, and uh, it's an attempt to prevent impacts from improper stormwater management. So, we're looking for a motion to authorize the signature of the Ty and Bond third party monitoring contract. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, now we come to, uh, I guess it's kind of messy, just it's just a discussion of the Eversource distribution rate increase response letter. So I mean I have a point of view on it and I know you have a point of view on it. I would first like to say that this is about to, this is, so Eversource has put in with the state for reimbursement of $1.5 million for six separate storm events. Uh, during the past calendar year. And um, to my kind of dismay, not a single municipality has, is of yet on record as opposing this. And 
my point of view on this was just our last storm that we had was was that in February? I forget. Um, the last storm that we had that was a townwide disruption in electric service, and once and live wires down on 116 and the 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 passageway between the bank on 116 and town hall here being in real bad shape for a significant period of time. And the, all of that storm damage, all that damage took place at 10 o'clock at night the night before. And Eversource rolled in about 9 o'clock at night the next day. And um, when they did roll in, they ro rolled in in large numbers. They were well-led, well-resourced, and made short, made short work of everything. A couple hours, the whole town was back on. But, and we did have a meeting at that time with their leader, um, who, who was a very nice man, but you know, he said that this is the, the problem with this storm was that the forecast did not indicate the severity of the storm. So Eversource did not alert and get everybody ready. And the, that right now the system is this, there's a loophole in the system, and that is that if the, weather, if the forecast doesn't uh, you know, indicate that loss of service will result from a storm, then they don't have it ready to go. They, they, it, it was way too long to mobilize the contractors, to, for the contractors to mobilize employees, and for them to arrive on site. And so my thing is that if you're gonna get reimbursed, you gotta do the job in a timely fashion. And that, that, is, that was not in a timely fashion. It just wasn't. And, um, and it's because of the syst systematic way that they're allowed to function, which is, uh, the, you know, the, the lack of a forecast is an excuse for them to, and it shouldn't be. So that's my take on it, and I know I saw a different take. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm concerned that, you know, next, I, I mean, Eversource and the DEP, the DPU itself, rarely take into account climate change or, you know, doing things that will mitigate some of the worst aspects of climate change and, and, uh, and instead look for money like this, right. you know, that they have to spend on cleaning up things that are clearly being caused by climate change. So, and so it's a little bit of them throwing them acting the part of an orphan, throwing themselves in the mercy of the court <laughs> after killing their parents. So, um, I'm more upset with the DPU and, and and you know approving lots of fossil fuel infrastructure that is probably going to become stranded assets as as the transition to renewables that's being mandated by the state you know goes into effect, but. That's it. So, in in a way, what what my complaint is is a, it's it's a different aspect than than the specifics. But if you would, if you want to have Conway express that concern, I think that would be great. Yeah. Um, the thing is due soon, I think. So we yeah. need to. So so, so so I'm gonna make a motion that um, the select board um, uh, 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 off you know write a uh, response letter objecting to the request. And even though, of course, we know it's a futile gesture and that we are tilting at windmills, nonetheless, it ought not to be, it, they ought not to be able to say that nobody opposed. And so, yeah. Um, so that's just the one thing that we can take from that. They can't say that after we write this letter, so. Well, we, we live, you know, we live in the same world of fear that when you know, the Policeman's Association calls up and looking for a donation and you say no, then you worry your, you, you know, really, your I never relationship. Worry. I never really worry that. Okay. With, with okay. the police going to change. And, yeah, and no. so is, is, you know, is Eversource not going to treat us well for opposing them? And I, but I don't believe they will. They uh, may, you know. We waited 24 hours for them to show up. I went, where can they treat us? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Um, but... Uh, uh, yeah. So I get you know looking for a, a motion to to write a response letter. So uh, uh, you know uh, as you summarized it. So I yeah, and, and and I talked to Veronique about writing it, and she said she would love to work with you on it. Okay, so, <laughs> great. Okay, good. Uh, good. So I'll yeah. second it. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. All right. So we'll do that maybe tomorrow morning, Veronique. Um, 
the 61A right of first refusal for the Goddard property on Shirkshire Road. So this is um, uh, when, when, a pe when a parcel of land has been protected um, the, the stat you know, statutorily and is then, somebody is thinking about buying it, the town has a, a, has a right of first refusal. Uh, or withdrawn for any reason. It's or, just being right. withdrawn from the Correct, if you correct. Want to, yeah. So that the town has a right of first refusal. Um, uh, and if the town doesn't exercise that right, then the purchaser or, or has to pay years of back taxes on it as if it had never been in Chapter 61. Um, in this case, we, the seller is, a lo is our local long-term Conway resident. The buyer is a long-term Conway resident. Um, so I think it's a win-win for the town. But, but do you, you sent out a note looking for all of the boards, yes. or a set of boards. Um, yes. did, did you get any boards that said, no, they really could justify a, a use for the town? No, no. it was, you know, so the assessors met on June 30th, and the recommendation was not to exercise that right. Planning board met on July 22nd. They again said no. Um, the Conservation Commission let me know by email on um, August 4th, no. Open Space said no. Uh, I think that was through an email as well. And I did put in a call to the State Forester. They had been, when this started when Ross was here, and they had been contacted. Um, and they, they did kind of call back, but it was just trying to figure out how to get a hold of me, and they didn't. They, gentleman had to get to his higher up to answer, but they haven't gotten back yet, so. And, and I'll just note, like, th theoretically, some of the uses for the town could have been for a new emergency, um, you know, emergency services uh, building for uh, new town, for, for athletic fields, all sorts, and for lots of, you know, it's, the road is not adequate for an emergency services building, the population density is not nearly enough for recreation stuff, so they're, you know, so, it doesn't really match our needs. It's a our beautiful needs. building lot. And, and, it, and um, Lord knows the town could use the tax rate. It could, absolutely. And, um, but but I, I, the, the other thing that I'd just like to note is that this, the, this it, if 61A issues have come up like every year that I've been on the select board. I don't ever recall us formally. Like, uh, I, I don't we, either. We, 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 we've never like actually surveyed all of the different stakeholders and different town yeah. committees. We've always just sort of made the decision ourselves with minimal conversation. So I think this is a much preferred model uh, of, of the way to do it, even though it's more work for everybody. So well, I, yeah, I agree. And this was, um, this was Ross, to give him credit. Yeah. This was his template for how to go about it yeah. and how so, to plan it out. So, so we've yeah. asked everybody, no, and everybody agrees, we are not going to exercise the right of first refusal. So um, do we need a motion? Mm, okay. Need to vote. Yes. Motion, motion made to refuse to exercise our right of first refusal and to communicate that to second you. okay and uh, all in favor aye all right and had we wanted that property we would have needed a special town meeting to authorize that which we now do not need for that reason however um i wonder whether there are other things in the pipeline in various committees that do want um i have not a, a special heard of town any meeting. to date Okay. But that doesn't mean that won't change. I know there is one group that is trying to get ducks in order to possibly have one, and that's the uh, McLeish ah. Writing Cottage people. But ducks are not in order yet, so I don't, I don't know. Um, and then the last item in the new business, request for Guilford Trust Fund and other trust fund procedures discussion. And we've never, there, there are some procedures, but, uh, so I, you know, do you want to do? Sure, this was my request, actually. Yes, yes. Um, simply because we had just had a request, and um, I just thought it might be good, and, and maybe I missed it in the files, but for us to sort of formalize this process a little bit more, just like Ross did with the 61A, um, right of first refusal, just for us to have an internal procedures of how we go about when somebody makes a request and what the parameters are. Do we want to um, say we will only expend the interest from that year um, from any one trust fund? What is the, how is it we wish to proceed, you know, with applications coming in? And also the potential for um, advertising 
these opportunities a little bit more so that more people who might be in need of some of these funds would be made aware that they could apply. We certainly don't get a lot of requests. Nobody knows about it. Yeah. Right. That's why I bring it up. And I thought if we even just did something where annually we you know, said these funds are available for these purposes, um, you know, please feel free to apply. And then we could go over um, the select board and, and Jan and I and you know, kind of say, OK, this is how much interest is coming in with, with each of the funds every year. Do we feel comfortable just spending that amount? Do they want to dip into it a little bit more? You know, what's our just general guidelines for how to proceed? For instance, if we get, you know, if we advertise and then we start getting a lot more applications, we would want to have ahead of time some kind of procedure for making a decision about it. But it would tie our hands too. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, if, for example, the money of the Comedy Grammar School, right? And that came out of one of these funds and. Two. Three. Oh, we had to collect a yeah, bunch of money. Yeah, yeah. And, three funds. And if, if we had said just the interest. Right, uh, right. That, that and you could, say, you could say in a procedure, this will be what our preferred, but we can waive this for something. I'm not saying something cut in stone. I think I yeah. just wanted some kind of procedure for how we go about it, just in case. I'm just. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that not spending into the principle is a generally good philosophy to preserve it for future generations. Um, but that's not a good enough reason to say no to a very worthy candidate or a very, you know. And in our, and just in my time as luck where there have been applications that were very worthy. Yeah. And um, very much a privilege and an honor to approve. Like, and, and those, yeah. Um, so that's, and, and it is a unique, uh, facet of Conway life. There are not many small towns with funds of this size. Um, and and uh, I don't know that there's any statewide statistics on it, but I did try to look it up once because to have a, a, a trust fund for the, that's set up for the town select board to administer and to grant the wishes of the needy um, and, and the handicapped and all that, and um, that's a a, a really cool thing. So. I, I could imagine having a limit of how often the same person or organization could make a request. Well, and some That's, of the some, funds. And, and, the, and some are, of the funds yeah. spell that out. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I'm, yeah. again, I'm just thinking general guidelines, just, you know, pretty much on the order of the, the 61A, just saying, okay, this is the procedure we'll follow, but it doesn't mean you have to stick to and, it. And just there is like a specific couple of things that I'd like the, that, that the funds are, are t t like, um, not every year, but almost every year at the grammar school, there is at least one family that at the end of the year really struggles to pay the lunch debt. And, and it's, it's, you know, the case has usually been it's a family that um, almost qualifies for free lunch, but is just barely, just barely not qualifying for it. And, um, and mm -hmm. but it's the policy of the Conway Grammar School to feed every kid the regular meal. Mm -hmm. Pay, pay or no pay, you deal with that later. And, um, uh, but the, the, sometimes that manifests in the end of the school year and all of a sudden it's thousands of dollars, a couple thousand dollars, and it's, it's gotten out of hand, it's too much. And, um, and in the past, it has always been the choice of the, select, of the school committee to either you know, eat, eat that amount in their budget, um, which is always problematic, or, um, or authorize the filing of lawsuit for collection, which has been done in the past. But I would never agree to that, um, mm. you know, unless that it was somebody driving, you know, a Maserati down Main Street and like, you know, thumbing their noses. But that's never been the case no, in yeah. my experience. So, um, uh, you know, so the, the I always thought that like something like if, but and so the the person that I really wanted to to know about these is the principal of the school and the director of special education if they could if they could notify the people right. of how to apply and, and, and even, then even we fill out the application for them because there's a like a whole thing about shame and all that yeah and, and, yeah. and un, unwillingness to ask for help which is a serious issue Absolutely. in the hill towns um and um so we you know so so there's that but 
there's also a larger group of people that are just in a bad spot and just need a little bit to help them past and help them out. And, yeah. So, so That's, I, I'd I like more people that, to use yeah. it. It's kind of when when when, you, when when a year goes by and you look at it and you like nobody's tapped into it and it's made you know that's great like this year the the Guilford fund made sixty thousand dollars in interest sixty five thousand dollars in interest that you know that's great but um, you know we, there's need out there that's not being so I I, I would be all favor for for something in the Conway Current a little write up about did you know. Mm -hmm. You know, do you know someone in need? Okay, and if, and if it's good with you, I'll just take a stab at drafting yeah. some procedures Great, and, yeah. and also do a little bit more research into each of the funds and then get you the information on what the annual And the other thing is when, when the last fund was, when we were doing this the last time, I, I remember um, the, the comment by our accountant, the written comment by our accountant, which was that the better practice is to have the fund pay the provider or the vendor on behalf of the person directly rather than pay that money to the person um, and then have that person pay the vendor. So, so I'd like to institute that as a practice generally because that would definitely cut down on potential for waste, fraud, or abuse. Or people worrying about it. Or people worrying about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's even more likely. Um, Great. So that's that. And I thought in that also um, was, was the, that we should also in new business, we should, instead of mail, that that lever at Fort Town thing ca counts as new business more than sure. just mail. Okay. Um, and um, because I, the, so this was a letter that came into the town? I mean, this yes. And I don't, oh, it's, I got it. It's it's in the very last page. If it's in, in here. Yeah. So we were part of the Leverett Four Town Community Development Block Grant, um, which yeah, ex the quarter ended, ending June 30th is the termination of the time for that grant and we did we did receive benefit from that I think that the other page shows nine um, housing houses rehab in Conway yeah and this was this was a really good program this was um, you know interest-free loans and that was that was that's a good thing so you know and I guess uh, I, I, I always wondered like why we were not part of, I, mean, I know last year I, I believe Greenfield was trying to get us to do it, it, to be part of theirs, but we never, it was two years ago maybe, um, I found out that we never really responded to their request. But it, so just like in the other one, I, I don't know how many people know about these. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. We did, they, it did get, I, I remember. I remember seeing flyers for it and seeing bullet, you know, seeing stuff on the local bulletin boards about it, and people did. At least nine homeowners found out about it. But this was a good program, and these block development grants are hard to get. We could never do it by ourselves. Um, uh, but we should be. I've always thought we should be even more involved in that and aim higher. And you know they give free side. They get that's that's where all the towns get all their sidewalks and all their downtown improvement stuff. And we've never really submitted for all of our sidewalks. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what are we looking to do? Just um, information or rejoin? It looks like it's just information. It is. It's letting us know that it's over and that um, we got to start thinking about what's next. So that's one thing I'd like us to do: think about yeah. what's next in that community block development grant area and whether we can still join, join up with somebody like a Greenfield or whoever is doing it this year, or whether Leverett's doing it again. Yeah. Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Yeah.
Um, items not anticipated 48 hours in advance. I don't have anything. Nope. Town administrator update. And I apologize, I don't think it got emailed to you. I got it done a little late this afternoon. Right. But I don't think. You can read it. It's okay, great. <laughs> Until recently, they were never emailed to us. Yes. So, oh, you know, okay. <laughs> well, yes. you know, a prior so occupant know. used to read it and and used to always request that no no interruptions be made and that no <laughs> that you that the that you wait until the entire thing is read and then ask for questions. Oh goodness. Yes, okay. but you're not one of those. Um, so the under the first heading, I have grant work. So during the past few weeks, I've been working with Mass DEP and the first hog to update and finalize the scope on what we just you just passed as the South River Resiliency and BP project. Um, I just wanted to thank Kimberly North McPhee, Joe Stragowski, Janet Shays, Michelle Terry, Ross Perry, and Tom Hutchison because they were the ones who really did all the hard work in making this happen. Um, and you already mentioned how much it is. Um, I'm also meeting with Joe and Janet to discuss next steps on each of the three parcels the town wishes to purchase as part of this project. And in the scope, we updated the beginning work, um, the date for when we begin work on this to October 1st with an end date of June 30th, 2022. So we have a little time to, to complete that task. We tried to push it back to 2023, but they wouldn't let us do that. So we had to stick with 2022. I also met with um, Nick Miller, who I said, yeah, um, who's the fluvial geomorphologist from Field Geology Services, who's been working on the South River issues through the FERCOG for years to get background information on past and current projects in Conway. I felt the need to, to speak with him just to get my head wrapped around. There's so many things going on with the South River that I wanted his sort of scientific viewpoint on, on what was happening. So that was great. And I also met with David Whittier um, from Field Memorial Library. There is a potential we both agreed after having met that we want to apply for a um, grant to have the Smithsonian's Museum on Main Street be housed at the Field Memorial Library for it's a six week period. It's going to be very competitive. Mm. Um, but, you know, we got the preliminary information and it looks like we can house it at the library and he's very much in favor, so I'm just waiting for the grant application wow. to come out, which would be really, I mean, we have such an amazing library that I'm really hoping will be very competitive from that standpoint. So, it's um, actually another thing that I think um, the town doesn't re doesn't appreciate it. And when, when you when you go to other town meetings and you see how every town has these six figure uh, budget line items for their library, I mean every town, our neighboring towns all have that, and we we. Our, our budget line item for the library is always around two thousand dollars, and um, I know it's in the will that they can't ask for more, but they should go to court and get rid of that will, or parts of it, because it's not fair to rule over the town from your grave. I think like there's, that. there's state laws about that too that yeah. you're required to apply and then justify how you spent it. Right, but there's there's things that they don't do. That, you know that they're not. We're not a part of the whole Western Mass Regional System anymore, and that's not not a full member. Not well, a full, we're a, we're a whatever. We're a low budget member. Yes, right. yes. I, and, I didn't update. And we started that. He's th his mm -hmm. library started the whole organization, and we now don't. They don't have the funding internally. Uh, through maybe maybe interest rate maybe interest was better this year, and they will be able to join more fully or whatever. But well, as I understand from David, that's underway. He's about to transform the library and go from the card catalog to barcodes. And showed me a mock-up of the new library card and we'll be connected, well, we already are connected with CW Mars, yeah. Um, will he need volunteer help people I believe come in? he would not yeah. mind uh, to have volunteer I, I, I bet there would be volunteers who would come yes. in and, and yes. help do that. Yes. It's a very pleasant place to volunteer. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. So yes, he's got a lot on his plate right now. Um, for the personnel, um, Ron Sweet has posted the positions for the mechanic operator nice. and for the highway clerk and should be posting that new position for buildings and grounds maintenance technician very shortly. Um, and Lee Whitcomb has also posted for the assessor clerk's position as Laura Hutt has resigned effective September 2nd. Mm. And Board of Health clerk Ginny Knowlton has turned in her resignation letter effective September 11th. So, 
that, and that's a massive thing. That's something like 40, 45 years of continuous town service. And yes. I know we had sort of a party at 40, so I don't know whether you can have another party a couple years later, but um, just hats off. That's, that's, that's legend. That's yes. legendary stuff. Absolutely. And if you added all of those people's time up. Yeah, yeah it's true. You're, you're talking about Ginny, but yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, I, we did uh, receive um, a couple of queries and complaints about the power outages um, happening with abutters near Nexamp. Um, and we don't know yet. The status is we don't know what's causing these. They're very short bursts. Oh, we um, had a couple. We, so, I know, and, I, the the yeah. day that I got that the first email, we had had the one the same time. Yeah. But. So the way I've left it is that I I am I have inquired with both EverSource and Nexamp that they can give us a, a formal statement of what's going on, and what the next steps will be. Um, I can tell you that. Uh, Nexamp re representative has assured me they will not be turning the site on again. It's off right now. They will not be turning it on again until they understand what's happening. And they may have a statement for us as soon as tomorrow. So, so the outages could be Nexamp related. They're, they're saying that they could be. Uh, Nexamp believes they're, the fault is at Eversource that when Nexamp turns on their generation, something trips in the substation of Eversource. And it shouldn't. And that every sort of needs to figure out, but it's but you know, it, you know, next half naturally would like to say it's not us, but they really do believe it's not them. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll and next half will get back to uh, every source to get back to you when they get the crew back here in 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, my understanding is that it, the engineers at Eversource and the engineers at Nexamp are speaking to each other about exactly what's going on. That's, that's so, good. So, yeah, just wanted to let you know that we're working on finding out. And then, just miscellaneous, since our last meeting, I've attended the annual senior luncheon at the Sportsman's Club, which was lovely. I've attended a planning board meeting, an assessor's board meeting. I had a wonderful time at the Irish Road Bowling Contest, as well as the grand reopening of the Conway Mall, which was just this past weekend. And I just wanted to say many thanks to all the wonderful volunteers who give their time to create these community events. I, I too, have had uh, three different positive comments about the new Conway Mall. Yeah. So, and uh, people are very impressed with how it looks and the attendant and the graciousness of the new attendant who um, I, nobody knew the name of, but they really just described the person as having purple hair. Oh, that's our new Board of Health member, Kathy Lamas. Ah, okay. Yes. So, yes. I didn't Yes, know. she's been absolutely wonderful and worked very hard on getting everything together, along with other volunteers. Uh, so, yeah. so but yes. she's, she's in charge of organizing that. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. Um, okay, select board member comments or concerns? None for me. None for me. Um, mail. Talked about that. So yeah, ma mail. Besides the the um, the concerns of the residents uh, abutting Nexamp, there were uh, also uh, we did receive a, a complaint about um, uh, about an experience that they had that somebody had at the uh, transfer station, and that has been hmm. referred to to uh, um, the board of health and uh, to take it up. Uh, who will be taking it up with their, the employee in question, et cetera. So there's that. Great. And that was it for the mail that I know of that's announcement worthy. Um, so I think our next meeting is next week. Yeah, we're so, gonna, so we're going to get back on the warrant schedule. That'd be good. And, um, we'll so, keep my calendar happy. Okay, good. <laughs> so, yeah, so ne that's next Monday. And, you know, if it's just... If it's just three or four of us, we can go. We can stay in town, the town office building. We don't. We don't need to. If, it, if we're not having other committees joining us, is it easier for you to set up here? I mean, you have to load. You load your car. You, I do, a, but then I'd have to come here and get the project. And then what am I going to project on? Right. To that, do it, that? It, I'm not quite sure how to set that up in that office, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, we've used the wall. In the okay. past, we've taken one of the posters off the wall and used that. But, um, 
So I'm, I'm okay staying here too. Yeah, I'm, either way is fine with me, but it's just as easy to be here. All right. Um, and then if somebody does come, we've got. All right, so we'll we'll make it here next Monday, which is uh, August 16. Yep. At 6 p.m. here at the town hall, and uh, and then thereafter, then we'll be back on it every other week cycle. So it will be two weeks from the 16th would be the next meeting afterwards. So, great. Other than that, so moved. <laughs> the dog said it. Um, okay, so we stand adjourned at 6.46. Great. Not too bad. Not better than I thought. Better. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Megan.